What's going on guys, Ronnie with JRP Performance here. I'm with my friend Sal from Driven by Passion. Uh, we're actually doing a quick video on engine braking because we get this question all the time. Uh, and I kind of wanted to make this video a quick video, as quick as I can make it. Uh, kind of explaining what engine braking is and why you need to do it in a certain way. And you know, everybody has their opinion on it. Uh, and let me just make everything clear right away. If you're machinist or your engine builder recommends you to do it in a certain way do it that way the reason that we do it and you know we just put it on the dyno and you know we let it rip we still have a braking procedure that we do here uh the only difference is the machine work that we do on the products that we use you know the ring packs that we use the pistons that we use the uh the finish of the cross hatch pattern and all that stuff comes into play when you're talking about engine braking so traditionally you know 30, 40 years ago, or I'm not even gonna say that. I, I should just say old school machinists. Uh, not necessarily people that are dumb. I'm not, you know, I would never say something like that. Uh, people that are used to the old ways. They would bore and hone a block without a torque plate. And not only the torque plate, let's not even talk about that torque plate, but the final honing uh, stone that they would use would be super rough. So nowadays, what we have, uh, you know, we call this process plateau honing and it's not necessarily a stone that they use it's not called a plateau stone but basically what the machinist does is whenever they're about to you know re, you know we're three two thousands to the final piston to wall clearance they'll switch to a set of finer honing stones so super super fine just like fine sandpaper and what that basically allows them to do is knock all of those peaks on these cylinders because whenever you take a you know honing stone or even you know whenever you bore it and then you take a honing stone and you're trying to put a cross hatch pattern on this engine you're gonna have some peaks left over so obviously you know whenever you put your finger in here and you feel it it's gonna be super soft but in reality there are microscopic peaks and ridges in the cylinder that are not addressed so in the old days they would tell you to break in an engine for 2,000 miles 3,000 miles the reason for that would be to basically knock all those you know peaks off so the ring would have the job the piston ring would have the job of knocking those peaks off nowadays whenever we do a plateau owning procedure the ring doesn't have to go through that stress this is why this is a big big reason why engines nowadays if they're built properly they can last for a very very long time um, so for instance if, uh, if a customer is making six seven hundred horsepower that engine can last over a hundred thousand miles um, and again one of the main reasons is because of that, of that plateau honing on top of that uh, you know before forged pistons would make a lot of noise and you know they would have to run them super loose because they would think you know it's gonna seize up in the cylinder and all this you know crap but that's absolutely not true nowadays we torque plate all these blocks like I mentioned in the previous video uh, you know whenever the machinist says actually torque plating the block to the final piston to wall clearance so they're honing it to the final piston to wall clearance the main girdle is on or if it's a 4B11 the main caps are on they're all torqued to spec the head gasket that's going to be used when the engine is going to be running uh, is going to be used whenever the torque plate is going to get bolted on the same head stud so all this stuff we basically try to mimic everything as if the engine is going to be running uh, and you know we can get it to super tight clearances about three to three and a half thou of clearance uh, as far as the piston to wall goes which is pretty tight compared to what people used to run you know five six years ago you know operas of like six seven thousandths of seed and you know whenever you run it super loose you lose ring tension it doesn't really matter if you have a loose ring gap or you know whatever it may be if you have a super loose piston to wall your piston is going to slop all over the place you're going to have a lot of a lot of wear on the skirts on the piston the cylinders are going to glaze because it's just going to keep on you know it's going to thrust on the cylinders and you're going to have a lot of wear and again the ring tension is going to lose the actual tension because you know you have double the clearance that you actually need so with today's 2618 pistons and proper uh engine assembly and machine work this is why we get the results that we do nowadays you know these engines can run for thousands and thousands of miles without any excessive blow by uh, any you know compression loss or anything stupid like that uh, so really it comes down to the final machining what we do as far as braking goes we will put the car on the lift uh, you know we'll start it with braking oil 530 braking oil uh, and the braking oil basically doesn't have a lot of additives in there it actually has no additives in there it just has zinc and phosphorus and a controlled amount of uh you know whatever else needs to be in there to basically make the ring seat uh because the reality of it is 
you do need some, some a little bit of wear to happen between the cylinder walls and the actual piston rings for the rings to seat. Uh, once we do, you know, we go through a heat cycle, we drain that, we go to our 2050, we load the car up on the dyno, and I'll do a steady state tuning procedure for about 20 to 30 minutes, you know, just load it up because, you know, the initial 20, 30 minutes of engine runtime, that's where you see the most heat and the most wear. So we make sure the rings are completely seated, we drain the oil, we put 20, 50, break in again and the reason I say 2050 is because of our clearances that we achieve as far as bearing clearances go and then we tune the car like that and once the car is completely tuned we drain it we put to, uh, synthetic 2050 it all depends on your uh, engine machinist and your engine builder guys so listen to them don't take my advice for it if you come to me take my advice if you go to your engine builder take their advice for it just want to kind of clear things up thank you guys